mystical poetry. I, I, you know, I do calligraphy in multiple languages and have read the sacred texts in, in the original languages, much of it. Hmm. So I, I have a great respect for language. I chant, I lead the chanting, I chant every day these long mantras and stotras that I've been doing for years and years. So the word is the word is something very special and beautiful, but the silence is is contains everything. So for me, the focus is on the silence. And when I am truly merged in the silence, when the eye is gone and there's only silence, then all the words that need to come come in the right way, in the right order. There's no prior thought or effort or organization or anything. Mm. So um, we were talking earlier about uh, well, your your retreats. Your retreats are different from other retreats that I've I've experienced um, in like the Buddhist traditions. The Buddhist traditions you see you tend to have like a lot of sitting, a lot of walking meditation or standing meditation, very silent. Um, in your retreats, uh, I've seen on your schedule dancing, and um, and like community time and movie night and games and having a bonfire and things like that. Um, and that sounds pretty, pretty chill, pretty cool, uh, relaxing. Um, why, why did you set it up this way? What's, what, what is it? Uh, why do you prefer this, this kind of retreat rather than the, the silent retreat? Yeah. So one thing I should say is that this whole project has been a continued experimentation. There was no preset idea of how to work with people, what's the best way, and how to do it. So it's grown and shifted in organic ways over the last five years. We just had our five year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And we've always been working with really, like it's the teachings are alive. So then how the Dharma is moving and how we're working with people and what's working and then moving in that way. So one thing uh, that I'm focused on is instead of giving just like a, someone a quick burst experience of something totally separate from their everyday life, then I want something to get to offer them something that they'll be able to maintain so they can continue their practice and they have a bridge uh, so that this that's why we call the program integral yoga which means the the yoga as the whole science or art of self-integration or self-realization the body heart and mind and conscious living so conscious living is then applying it to our daily lives and living with more uh, creativity and joy and awareness and presence in these things. So part of it is of the program, I say the program, there are five main parts, the integral yoga, <coughs> which the integral yoga, again, it's dealing with the whole aspect of the integration of one's being, the sense of coming back to wholeness, coming back to oneself. And so the, for that, we work with many different techniques and practices to for self-experimentation. But the idea is that the yoga, it's not like something that a teacher tells you what to do and you do it, but it's a path of self-experimentation and self-discovery. We're learning about ourselves by doing the practice. And so the basis is a, a personal practice, a regular personal practice. So we're giving people the tools to continue that personal practice when they leave here. Whereas it'd be very difficult for a person to continue like uh, sitting, walking, sitting, walking like 10 hours a day. Mm -hmm. We can inspire people by get them getting to live that every day for six days and see how they feel, how their bodies are more uh, awake and alive and light and seeing how their, their creativity and their openness and their heart and their love and their joy is open and also how their mind is more clear, less confusion. So we want to give people a real experience. I mean, it's you know, we, it's not 10 hours a day, but we have about five to six hours a day of programs and classes of sitting meditation and uh, asana and dharma talks and different uh, um, classes, but they're all, the classes are always the same. It's the asana, breathing and meditation. So in each of the classes, we're doing all of these so that they, they, they get a really direct experience of working with the same practices over and over because it's not that we want to do a little of this and a little of that and a little of that and a little of that. The, the, the key that we're teaching is to set up a regular daily practice of exploration, spending time with oneself, taking care of the garden of one's life. So integral yoga, then the idea of retreat, which we have here too, stepping out of our daily habits and roles in life and into an environment that's contained on a regular schedule and is, and is inviting us into a deeper experience of ourselves. 
Then we have community, which means living together with people, sharing, reflecting, and learning <clears throat> by other people's experiences and, and sharing our joys and our questions and doubts. And such beautiful things come out by listening to one another and learning to relax and let go of our judgments and being together with other people. There's so much deep learning that comes through that, especially in our modern uh, isolated uh, world. Another, another aspect of the retreat, which I forgot to mention <clears throat> in the retreat part, is the digital detox. It means stepping back from the technology, no technology, no Wi-Fi, and, uh, and, and coming back to one's own rhythm, journaling or relaxing. All of this is in the retreat. So we have integral yoga, retreat, community, and then nature. Other big thing is nature. Stop uh, all the time talking and being with humans and spend time with the real world. This, this, uh, so many different the creatures and the species and plants around us. So retuning back to the, this natural vibration, the natural world, the natural life. And then the last uh, aspect is... Um, Gosh, what is it? Integral yoga, retreat, community, nature, creativity, creativity and inspiration. Awakening this energy, because it's not just the inner, but it's what we are then expressing. So if we have a deep inner world, but it's stuck in the expression, then there's a blockage, and energy is not flowing well. So we have to <coughs> light this fire <coughs> of creativity within us. And then we have our life has that deep richness, and each moment becomes a... A, a poem or a symphony or a creation. So then the program is working with all of these layers so that we can uh, feel it and then take it with us. So this is the best way that I've found for working. I also believe in long-term deep silent retreats, but I think that it's good for people to have a foundation first so that it can be integrated. But at the it's whatever, wherever anyone finds themselves, whether it's in doing a 10-day Goenka Vipassana or it's, you know, sitting in a no walking and no asana, or whether it's doing a more creative uh, uh, community-based uh, program like we offer here, then we have to start somewhere. But the question is then, are we going to be able to continue that work? Or is it just going to be like a thing that we did, you know, a couple years ago I did this thing, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> So my main focus and my measure of success is not how many people come or even if people are having a good time, but how many people are then keeping up with the practice and, and continuing, the, continuing to, to learn. Okay. Um.